Yeah. Renowned rock band Weezer. Here they are. Brings their Voyage to the Blue Planet tour to Minnesota Wednesday, September 4th at XL Energy Center. Don't miss out as they play all of the hits, including the Blue Album in full with special guests The Flaming Lips and Dinosaur Jr. Now, tickets are on sale now, but caller number 13 is going to win your way in with a pair of tickets. 1-800-320-5326 is the number. Good luck. How long are you going to talk? Flaming lips. I got a set of Flaming Lips. That was actually the band wow. Flaming Lips. That was really good, yeah. man. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, um, that was nice. Thanks. Powerful I like Marshall. that. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't sound like you really did. That though. guy's great. Who the dude? Yeah. yeah, he's the best guy. He's a good dude. I love him, man. He's yeah. a good guy. Good guy. Good dad. Good man. Hey, do you remember you know, selling houses? And do you remember the? Uh, a lot of people on this show have dads who sell houses. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you remember uh, he just mentioned the Chipotle guy would just hand out Chipotle? Oh, yeah. oh man, coupons God, I, to everybody, I, right? Or yeah. gift cards or whatever the deal is. And he said what he'd do for him. Yeah, but do you know who that is? That's the guy from Canes now. That's Mike from Canes. Are yeah, you Mike serious? Wills. Same guy. So you know how Mike from Canes always comes in and just gives us bike box yeah. combos. Same guy. Oh man. That's even better. Yeah, so all he's been doing the last couple of decades is just giving us stuff. Yeah. He's the best. Yeah. So he's the guy that gives you canes for free whenever you want. But he's part of the problem. He, yeah. th- My <laughs> wife thinks I get, get uh, canes essentially for free for the rest of my life because Mike has ruined her. Uh, whoa. Not in that whoa. way. Good for I Mike. Do, I mean, I, I guess I wouldn't know. Whoa. I don't know. How would I, know? I do love that she volunteers you to buy canes for neighborhood birthday parties. Yeah, that hasn't happened in a long time, but that has happened because I, I quote, get it for free. We should have Mike in sometime. It's been a while. Okay. Yeah, I agree. He's probably busy over at Corey's house, though. No, <laughs> I don't true. get that joke. <laughs> uh, I don't understand what that means. Well, you said it. Yeah, but I didn't even get it when I said it. <laughs> this is KFAN News with Chris Hockey, Hi. presented by the St. Saint Paul Saints. Yeah, thank you, St. Saint Paul Saints. Don't forget, this yeah. weekend, man, it all starts. It's all getting underway. The St. Saint Paul Saints. As this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they're actually playing baseball. And by then, it's going to be nice and warm, and you're going to love it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So stop on by, won't you? Well, the weekend's finally here, right? Uh, Not quite. It's only Wednesday, buddy. Oh, sorry. Yeah, do you know what day it is? Yeah, Wednesday, buddy. Oh, my God. Oh, no. (sighs) How do I say this story without completely throwing my wife under the bus? I don't even know if I can. Saintsbaseball.com, by the way. Saintsbaseball.com. Yeah, go ahead. Boy, oh, I'm going to catch up for this one. Yes, yeah, say it anyway. Oh, it's fun. boy. We had a 45-second argument yesterday about oh, no. she tries to claim oh, no. that dogs are so in tune with their owner's schedules that the dog can tell the difference between a weekend and a weekday. Um, hmm. And I said, are you nuts? The dog knows it's Tuesday. And she goes, well, she doesn't necessarily know the concept of day. She just thinks because the, our patterns are different, right? When we go to bed, when the kids go to bed, she claims, and she might be right. It just, the concept of going, so you're telling me Mochi over there who doesn't seem to want to move somehow is not moving because she knows it's not a weekend. And she goes, don't look at me like that. I'm like, I'm just saying there's no way she understands the Gregorian calendar. <laughs> um... God. She's going to kill you in your sleep. Yeah. Uh, I keep Which, telling her the life insurance policy is not as much as you think. <laughs> I'm worth way more alive than dead. And she is <laughs> stuck not. between a rock and a hard yeah. place. Because she probably wants me dead. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, it isn't worth it. Anyway. Yeah. Where do you guys stand on that? Do you think dogs well, know think what day dog it is? I think the dog realizes that you're home. Yeah. But I, I don't mean, think. I think that when the dog sees you. And then you leave. It thinks it'll probably never see you again. Right. But here, so yeah. here's it sparked last night because, you know, kids have school. So bedtime during the week, much earlier than bedtime when we don't care when the yeah, little one yeah, goes to bed on the weekend or whatever. Bed, yeah, have fun. Who cares? <laughs> so because it was earlier, she's like, well, the dog knows it's a weekday. And I'm like, what right. is happening? <laughs> what? I mean,. Her logic's not awful, but just the the way that she worded it, saying that basically she knows it's not the weekend. That's what got me. I mean, what are yeah, you talking I mean, about? I, the weekend's finally here. That's yeah, what not Mochi according says. To Mochi. Nah. What do you guys think? 
No. Yeah. Who's, is she right or am I right? I mean, or is not, it somewhere in between? I think it's somewhere in between. And, and I think it's something that I would have been like, yeah, you're probably right, and just moved on. Yeah, <laughs> You right. know me. You've yeah. known me for 22 <laughs> years. Yeah, she said the dog yourself. knew it wasn't the weekend, and I couldn't <laughs> yeah. process that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean... Sometimes Jeez. our dogs on the weekends will sleep till like six or six thirty. During the week, they're up at like well, four they, thirty. They gotta get, get their lunches ready. Oh, you know, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm kind of on her side. But of course I, you but are. I like her more than I like you. Of course, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. There's that. Because she likes me more than she likes. A hundred percent. We feed our dogs at like three every day, and we don't need to like look at the clock to know when it's three because they'll. Start barking. Correct. There you go. That's yeah, true. My dog's so, just, yeah. Right, but that's the same every day. So yeah. my dogs what? do the same thing about 4.55 because it's about 5 o'clock and we feed them. They'll sleep they in on the weekends too, though. Ooh. Yeah. Relax. Yeah, all right. Yeah, relax. Yeah, relax, Zach. So you think they know that it's Saturday? I yeah. Don't... Just say it, Zach. Don't be afraid. Yeah, don't be afraid of him. Don't I'm say it. I'm just not going to look make eye contact <laughs> with him. Yeah, because he's got beady eyes. What if you want to make eye contact? Oh, yeah. Ugh. Anyway, I've had enough of you. Anyway, it's, it's, a, it's the middle of the week oh, for all that. the dogs that are listening. It is Wednesday. <laughs> Check your planner. Yeah, and don't forget to set your clocks back. <laughs> Seven thirteen. Did your dad text you again to tell you that? No, he was just asking about the twin schedule. But oh. well, they Ooh. start tomorrow. That's what I told him. I said that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I said uh, I think it's like uh, three ten tomorrow, and he's like, mm-hmm. "Great, thanks for the update." I would like to tell you guys some news now. Would you like to hear it? Yeah, duh. Wait, dogs being able to right. function with calendars? That's not breaking news? That's pretty. That's gigantic in the animal kingdom. This is just a little bigger than that. Go. A major bridge in Baltimore, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, partially collapsed early yesterday morning. I'm sure you know about that by now. After it was hit by a 948-foot Dolly cargo ship, Bronner's Builders, Inc. had a construction crew on the bridge fixing potholes when it collapsed. A building company executive said this evening that six of its employees were presumed dead. Uh, two people who had been plunged into the river were rescued. One is in serious condition. But, of course, it was an accident, even though you might have read some say- things earlier saying it wasn't. A mayday call from the cargo ship allowed time to stop traffic getting onto the key bridge. Here's Maryland Governor Wes Moore on how important that mayday call was. You no, know, we had a ship that was coming in at eight knots. So coming in at a very rapid speed. You know, once the warning came up and once notification came up that there was a mayday, literally by being able to stop cars from coming over the bridge, these people are heroes. They saved lives last night. Wow. Wow. Uh, you just mentioned this, but um, I think over the last couple of years, I've said this a handful of times and I'll stand by this. The day that I get let go or quit or whatever from uh, iHeart is the day that I am off social media. Yeah, and, and that's yesterday the day was a- we party. <laughs> yeah, can't wait. <laughs> You're going to get ripped. It's fine. I won't be on social media to see it. Because yesterday, though, was another great example. Just a I know. cesspool I know. of idiots. Yeah. What they thought, what they believed, conspiracy theories, it was the worst. They just can't let it breathe for a second and go, let's, let's gather the facts. Let's see what's going on. It was immediate. It was, this is a border problem. This is a terrorist act. This is a conspiracy. What? This is a distraction. Sauce right? yelled, the juice is loose. You, you said you what? yelled, the juice is Who loose. Who do you follow? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Like, you, yeah. you got to fix did, your... So, like, you in, did you and Hot Ass Randy have, like, an hour-long right. conversation? It's out there, man. It's It was, uh, uh, yeah, it was but, like, Lizard I even, People Central on, I saw on Twitter a couple yesterday. Of replies. I, I saw a bunch of them. It was everywhere. I, I did. But yeah. Yeah. But... I don't know. Yeah, I was bad, playing MLB The Show. Yeah, there you, well, see, there, there you go. There you go. Yeah, um, but, uh, yeah. But, you know, the theory that whatever whatever you hear first is the thing that it's hardest to shake, right? When it comes to a news story or yeah, a... You're uh, right. It's, you know, you go back to Duke or Lacrosse, right? a forum right? post. Sure. The first thing you... Right, the first... Exactly. Well played. But the first thing you hear is the one that it's the hardest to shake. So you just think of all of these people that are seeing these posts first. Yeah. And then instead of ex- instead of accepting... Facts as they come in, they just have to deconstruct that first thought. Man, yeah. How do you how do you shake these people from believing it if that's what they're reading? I think it's um, also, uh, you know, I think there were always people who believed that kind of stuff when things happened. Now you just have to read their thoughts, mm. or you see it. You know. Yeah. Uh, here's one last uh, soundbite, by the way. 
Uh, it was the quick response from the Baltimore Bridge Dispatch that helped save lives by quickly communicating that all traffic had to be stopped on both sides of the key bridge. Here's the dramatic communication as they work on that as soon as they heard there was a problem with that cargo ship. I need one of you guys on the south side, one of you guys on the north side, hold all traffic on the key bridge. Uh, there's a ship approaching that just lost their steering. So they tell you get that under control, we got to stop all traffic. I'm en route to the south side. Yeah, if we can stop traffic, just make sure no one's on the bridge right now. There's a crew up there. You might want to notify whoever the foreman is, see if we can get them off the bridge temporarily. Time for it. Once the other unit gets here, I'll line up on the bridge. C-13 dispatch, the whole bridge just fell down. Everybody, the whole bridge just collapsed. Do we know if all traffic will stop? I can't get to the other side, sir. The bridge is down. C-13, I'm holding all traffic northbound. There you go. That's the audio. While the uh, one of them was watching Chicago Fire, that's the music back there that <laughs> yeah. you could hear. Um, but uh, hey, God, so they were able to do that, man. Can you clarify what you said a couple seconds ago? Because maybe I didn't hear right, or maybe I'm not sure. So the the six people that are presumed dead, yeah, were those people on the boat or no, on the bridge? They were working on the bridge on potholes on the bridge. Working oh, on the bridge. So yeah, exactly. Did yeah. no one on the boat die when the sh- when the bridge collapsed on the front of the ship? I don't believe so. I don't think so. No, because okay, so, uh, the engine man. compartment and the uh, steering and all that, I believe, are uh, on the, the back? back of that ship. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So no one on the boat died, but six people on the bridge. Are yeah. presumed dead. Bronner's building, uh, Bronner, Bronner Builders Inc. had a construction crew on the bridge fixing pot, potholes when Man. it collapsed. Ugh. Man, oof, goodness sakes! Uh, that I, I mean, and, and of course the video I've seen, I'm, I'm sure we've all seen, is sped up. But I can't believe. I, I wouldn't expect that even a boat that giant would be capable of knocking a bridge down that easily. Yeah, correct. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I, I I don't know about science and math is not my strong point. I'm just not very bright. But it just—I would think that you'd be able to bump uh, into something, and it wouldn't just completely collapse. There's a word for it in engineering. Uh, I don't know, single failure or something like that, like where, where it hits the right spot. Yeah, it's the yeah. same okay. thing like that happened with, with 35W, where uh, you know a lot of modern bridges now. If if one part fails, there's other things that can keep most of it up. Uh, but there are some bridges, obviously, like this one, where. You take one piece and it's just a domino effect. So that's exactly what it looked like, man. Yeah. Just bam. Yep. Yeah. Oof. It's too bad. Yeah, and thank God, uh, most uh, you know they got the traffic stopped. I can't imagine if it had happened, you know, during rush hour or something like that. Google Oof. says it's called the sauce point. Is that what they call oh. it? It's Why just is... one singular failure. Oh, Why is Google oh. so mean. Oh, I'm sorry, your wife hates you. <laughs> <laughs> Stop my Look at you for once. You weren't looking in a mirror when you said that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, you, you, he took your joke and made it better. Yeah. Oh. Uh, he's like BSFF. Close. What the hell is that? B A S F. The air, the railroad. <laughs> I thought you were talking about a sex axe <laughs> that involved whips and chains. Yeah, what's B S S F? Uh, what does that stand for? They take your idea and wreck it. No, but what does the acronym BSSF stand BSF- for? That's what you said. BS- BSSF. It okay. stands for Be careful. Bill, yep. Sam, Fred, and Frederick. Oh. Now you just did BSFF. No, uh, the A guy doesn't want to be involved. He's a silent partner. There's oh. no A in BSSF. Or, I mean, for, again, singular failure. <laughs> More of the power trip after this on The Fan. 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 Don't forget the Power Hour begins at 8 a.m. You can watch what? at kfan.com slash watch. It's powered by Quantum Fiber, your world unleashed. That's right. Silo. Rock and Club by Burnsville Ames Center Theater on Saturday. Beautiful place down there, man. Come on by. Tickets still available. Spending all day in Lake Maganza. Yeah, Corey, uh, Sauce will be there uh, singing that line. And then he walks off stage. And yep. then he reenacts the dude standing at the front of the stage. Yep. And then you can't control yourself and you look like Randy in a South Park episode when he's covered in ectoplasm. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I don't even know what to say. There's a lot going on here. What's going on? <laughs> in, this, in this story. Yeah. In this preview of what's to come. Careful. Whoa, okay. Whoa. Right. <laughs> On Saturday. Yep, nope, thank you. Yeah, we get oh, it. how do you know it's a Saturday? <laughs> yeah, what are right. you, my dog? <laughs> yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Rocket Club, according to your dogs, this Saturday. <laughs> they're going to show up. They're going to show up on Wednesday, First and one. I'm going to be yeah. proven correct. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> the Ames Theater. Dumbasses don't Son even know what bitch, day it is. What day is, is it? 
Oh, they're gonna, man, they're gonna wake gonna you up on lick my privates. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're gonna wake you up on Saturday morning, Corey, with tickets in their mouth. The juice is loose. <laughs> yeah, geez. we're going to see the club. <laughs> is that the dog? Yeah. Okay. I hope so. <laughs> Sauce, would you like to do sports? Yeah. <laughs> It's time for Fan 5 on the Power Trip, presented by All Around Property Preservation. Okay. Thank uh, you, All Around. The Minnesota Timberwolves battle the Putrid Pistons tonight at 7. The Wolves are 14 and a half point favorites. That game can be heard right here on the Fan. The Wolves are 49 and 22. Uh, they are, uh, the Pistons are 12 and 60. The Wolves are a game and a half back behind Denver and a po- and half a game behind the Thunder. One game back. One game back. Oh, wait. Oh, 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 no. Because oh. the, uh, the Thunder won last night 119-112 over the Pelicans. So now uh, OKC a half game behind Denver. They are a game ahead of the Timberwolves. All right. Either way, let's go Wolves. Yeah, let's go Wolves. Season's almost over. Almost. When Regular does the playoffs season. start? Uh, middle of April. Yeah. Can't oh. wait. Yeah, I think the 20th of April. 420. Plays it. Well played. Uh, the Wild have 11 games left, Zacho. Starting mm-hmm. tomorrow, they battle the Sharks at the X at 7. The Wild are now nine points back of a wild card spot after the Knights lost 5-4 to four in OT to the Preds. So the Blues are now also three points ahead of the Wild for the final wild card spot. Yeah, bummer. Uh, another bummer of a day. Uh, but you know what? They play the worst team in the league tomorrow. Uh, Chris Hockey's going to be there before the game. That's right. John Creasel's doing Let's Play Hockey. So Does he still plenty it? of excitement. Yes, a thousand in billion sure? percent. Why, why do you have two billion. thumbs down? I'm just saying why he deserves it. Because they smell funny. Right. Oh, ick. Why are your thumbs stinky? You know. You, you know exactly. I, I learned why. it from you, Dad. Ugh, <laughs> uh, Brett, your thoughts on the wild? <laughs> I mean, it's it's disappointing, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's it sucks when you go through these long stretches and then you're kind of just, I, for lack of a better word, you're screwed, really, because you you already made your bed, so you kind of have to lie with it right now. But yeah, let's let's see what can happen in these last uh, handful of games, but. Uh, the math isn't mathing for the wild right now. Yeah, the math isn't math. I'm, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, okay, hold on. I have, I have a further question for, yeah. uh, for these gentlemen. For the math. Uh, are we suffering right now from how poorly we played in the very early season? Yes. yes. Isn't and that the, the truth, middle. right? And <laughs> like the they had, and the middle. Well, I thought and we the were end. better than this. You no, know what I mean? Like, they were at times. And they're, they're very streaky at times. There were times where the, the, when this team was on fire, it was great. But then... You just it was uh, it was like a box of chocolates at times too, where you just never knew what team you were going to get that yeah. uh, that particular night. Dude, that's and, a fascinating wow, analogy. Well that was said. fantastic. Yeah, I got it from a movie. What movie? Uh, it's called Big. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, P. You like that joke? <laughs> that's Charge. That's P. A. Is it P. A. What? That's Charge? are you high? Is it? Is that P. A. We've been saying. Thanks, PA, for about the last 48 thought, hours. Really? I you thought it was on drugs. You, oh, you had to get an Uber That's because you're too high. That sounds like charge to you. Play it again, please. It might be cool. Here we go. And by the way, who's doing this? <laughs> Who is it? Not me. <laughs> oh, it's probably me. I'm sorry. I'm by sorry. the way, he yep. never yep. notices. No, yep. and he's going to be here in a second. We'll keep yep. playing the bongos and he still won't recognize it. Hold up. Here we go. Oh, good. That's like charge to you. Yeah, are you no deaf? Kidding. I would. Yeah, I would bet you? a lot of money if you were. If you, if, I will, guess now I know it's, it's PA. But PA dash. Oh, good. Yeah, nobody thinks it's charge. Oh, good. Your car did not work this morning. You needed a ride because you're too high. That's not entirely inaccurate. <laughs> wow. Well, might not want to admit that. Yeah. On the radio. No, I'm kidding. But I'm. I might not be. I don't know. I thought that was charge. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. We're, uh, I don't think anybody's offended, <laughs> uh, other than the fact that you obviously don't listen. Uh, because I, Corey's right, we all say. I've all heard, the time, I was hearing it, but I, I was yeah. like, "What are you?" Done what? that bit for? No, I've been hearing it. I just been like, well, I just I guess I never understood. 
why we were saying why that you were saying PA. PA. Oh, you thought we were being. Uh, I thought you were like responding because uh, I assumed it was like a Friday football feast type of oh, thing. Oh, good, Zach. That's the dumbest thing I've heard all week, and I was basically told that a dog could be an executive oh, my assistant. God. You yeah, might as well right. not go home. Yeah, you're in trouble. <laughs> Thank yeah. God she doesn't listen to this yeah, show. She'll find out. Dude, if she was on Vanderpump okay, Rules, was me, she'd be crying. That was right me now. playing yeah. the bongos. Now I'm in. I'm yeah, in, that was, yeah, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brett? Yes? Uh, why does your football team have three kickers after Greg Joseph joined your team yesterday? A former Viking I still kicker. Don't, yeah, they have I, three kickers. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, I don't. I don't Thanks get it at all. I, if, if they're <laughs> going to if they want to do a reality show about the the kicker competition, I I don't get it. They already signed Pod Lesney, I think his name is. I I don't understand it. I'm mad. Is because, Carlson bad? <laughs> he was all right, but he's he a rookie extra too. Points too. Yeah, but I, I was willing to see it out at least one more year just because he's a rookie. Did you let and, him know? <laughs> <laughs> right? Did you text? I, I I sent it up the flagpole. Yeah, okay. I haven't heard anything mm-hmm. back. I am an owner, so. Oh, are you one of those? Um, yeah. So uh, I didn't hear anything back though. Shocking. Yeah. But mm. yeah, it's it's weird, and I I hate it because I can't do the bit of the Vikings take all the old Packer players. That's all they do because yep. we took one of yours. So man, man, there goes was- that bit. Fired up with PA yesterday about bringing Aaron Jones in. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. yeah. I'll play it in Vikings news. Yeah, I got the was, audio. But yeah. man, he's fired up about Aaron Jones. And I don't expect him to not say, hey, we were really gr- glad to get this guy. But he was verbose. Is that the right word? Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. was. Oh, uh, went one. overboard. Yes. What? That's how Zach said it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Charge. Yes. Yeah, thanks, Charge. <laughs> uh, the Twins open their season tomorrow at KC at 310. Oh, good. Pablo Lopez will, thanks, Charge. Pablo Lopez will start for the Twins. Joe Ryan will pitch game two, and Bailey Ober will pitch game three for your Twins. Uh, that's Twins News brought to you by Quantum Fiber. Thank you, Quantum Fiber. Yeah. Uh, their bullpens in uh, shambles, and then uh, oh! Jordan Montgomery, who was the last good starting pitcher available. Signed with Arizona, who also lost their TV deal. Oh, but no. they added a lot of money to their team because they want to win. Huh. Yep. That is correct. Uh, uh, they lost their TV deal. Yeah, they're in the same boat as the Twins were. I think they have their own bit now, right, Zacho? Don't the Diamondbacks have their own app? Yeah, I mean, yeah. If it's anything like the Coyotes, Rosie. which I imagine it is, yeah. it's they just Major League Baseball produces it. But that it's also on TV and, yeah. and radio. Eleven hours ago, you tweeted John Heyman, uh, retweeted, I guess, a John yeah. Heyman post because yeah, he said Montgomery that. deal to D backs first reported by uh, Jeff Pass and blah 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 blah. Then you said you said our local team really wants to win. I stand by that. I stand by you. Everybody be cool. I stand by you. Everybody be cool. <laughs> Roser. Rosie. Good morning. What's up, buddy? Nice uh, slap in the face when you walk outside this morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just an observation. Oh, that. <laughs> I am? Yep. Uh, Jaden Daniels will throw today at the LSU Pro Day, and Drake May will throw tomorrow hmm. at the UNC Pro Day. Ooh, what are they throwing? Uh, <laughs> balls. Balls. And, and uh, Rosie, according to Adam Schefter, there will be two... Christmas Day games this year on a Wednesday. Of yeah. course there will be. And I, I heard someone was speculating it'll be the Vikings in Atlanta that day. At oh, I, I heard oh. it might be Vikings in the pack. That, that, you're right. You know what? Yeah. That's right. That's it's a better. That's a better uh, comparison. Better shouldn't they treat matchup. though? Shouldn't they treat Christmas Day just like they do with these uh, overseas games? Didn't the Vikings just play two years ago on Christmas? Haven't they yep. played the last yeah. two? So like should, always so shouldn't we need a break? And Give the us problem a break. Is two years on a ago, Wednesday. I, I think two years ago was an, a home game, so that might make it an away game. Wait, so the team that plays? Oh, no, I'm sorry, Hogs. I know. Uh, yeah, whatever. I'm lucky to have the job. I'll take it. But, you, you but, um, but, it, uh, but, uh, yeah. It's going to be Saturday game. So there'll be a Saturday game before the Wednesday game. Okay. Yep. Yes. Yeah, the four teams question. that yes. play on Wednesday uh, are slated to play so on be Saturday. Like getting ready for a Thursday game. Exactly. Basically. Correct. Yeah. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it would But they still no haven't sense. announced the teams. So basically, they have occupied every day of the week except for Tuesday. Except for Tuesday. Yep. That's well, it. Yeah, ask Corey's dogs. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> now you can't go to his house. <laughs> uh, Rosie is here. More of the power trip after this on the fan. Picking up steam by Alexander Craig. Local music on the power trip morning show. Send yours to hockeykfan.com. We'll try to get it on. The fan. Jenna.
Hey, welcome back. It's Power Trip Morning Show, 742. Rosie's here, man. Just, Hi. Just cruising in. Yeah. Sunshine today. Yeah. A little different today than it was yesterday, is it not? Oh, my. Uh, much different. Right? This is just a blip. I mean, you know what? I think most people I've talked to go, look, we've had such a, we've had no winter. None. No snow, no cold weather. Just a reminder where we live, and we need the moisture. You know, come yeah. on. And this by next week, it's going to be in the 40s, 50. I mean, it'll be fine. I can tomorrow, wait. 55. Yeah, it's know. for the Twins opener. Yeah, great. Yeah, Home it might opener. have been yeah. uh, a little premature in getting the old motorcycle out of storage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little, yeah. But How long have you lived like, here? I know. I rode it for like four days, though. I had the best time ever, yeah. but now it's oh, just, yeah. it's yeah. sitting there looking at me well, and going, it's It cold won't be out. long. No, I can't April wait, first. See, Rosie, you know what? Your sunshine is what you are. And I like it, man. Well, Thank you. I mean, it's just a yeah. It's it's That's just a good feeling. Tolerable. Rosie, <laughs> don't Rosie, <laughs> Rosie. That. Um, uh, should we do uh, Vikings news, Corey Cove? Sure. Because I'll tell you what, we have some audio. Ah. It's time for Vikings news on the power trip, presented by oh, Radco. Radco. So he was on with the PA yesterday. He being the coach KOC from the owners' meetings down in Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also watched in in, in uh. Like uh, fast forward almost him sitting with the press yesterday. Did he mention quarterbacks at all in any of either of those? Because I don't have audio. KOC. Yeah. Um, I saw him on with Pat McAfee. Well, he looked like he just came out of a workout because he was wearing like a little t shirt and oh, yeah. go on. Was he cute? <laughs> he, Looking cute. He was very was attractive. Mesh? Yes. Yeah. Right. No, it was not mesh. Damn yeah. It, uh, he, he talked about the quarterbacks a little, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't hear it. Um, Never says anything, but he yeah, talks right, about right, it. Right, 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 right. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, he talked about the defensive changes uh-huh. and how excited he is. And this is uh, with Paul Allen, Kevin O'Connell. I'm really excited about what we've been able to do defensively and free agency, you know, whether it's adding um, really impactful pieces like a Jonathan Grenard, Andrew Van Ginkle, Blake Cashman, um, just, to, just to name a few. We've solidified our depth a- along the interior of the defensive line with some some guys that will really play well as pieces around what Brian Flores is trying to do. Um, and then I think, you know, bringing back uh, Harrison Smith was a huge, huge thing for me. Uh, yeah, the I Harrison agree. Smith thing. Um, if you're wondering exactly why, here's more explanation mm-hmm. on that, Corey. Since we've arrived here in 2022, we've, you know, we've had some of our more impactful leaders move on. Um, to other opportunities and, and uh, getting Harrison uh, back in the fold once he decided, you know, he was he was uh, giving it a go to play football. The best thing about it was he wanted to be a Minnesota Viking. He loves the fans of uh, uh, in the Twin Cities and Vikings fans all over the world. I mean, it means a lot to Harrison Smith to be a Minnesota Viking. Uh, and I know our fans feel, uh, feel great about Harrison and, and the career he's had here and that it's going to get a chance to continue. The veteran presence, essentially. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, I think Harrison Smith's career has has taken off, and I think he can. He still has. He can still play this game at a high level. Uh, no question, he'll be in the Ring of Honor someday, and you know that's for another day, another year. But more importantly, uh, he's he's got the smarts. He has, um, you know, that that gamesmanship that this team needs, especially with a lot of new faces to kind of solidify what Brian Flores wants to do defensively. And he's he's the quarterback back there in, in, in what, what they want to do defensively. Absolutely. I think we're in this weird holding pattern right now because I think everybody's yeah. uncomfortable about the uncertainty. Yeah. Right? Whether you liked Cousins or not, we knew what we had. Right? Didn't matter if you right. were on Team right. Kirk or anti-Kirk. You knew what he was. He was mm-hmm. a top 10 quarterback. Mm-hmm. Maybe you didn't think he could win in the playoffs, but you thought he was going to put up big numbers. We knew what we had. Now it's like we have Sam Darnold, and we don't know if we can get up to three or four. And get a quarterback. We don't know if we're going to stay at 11 and get a quarterback. We don't know what the quarterback plan is. But think of like a month from now, if we know Drake May is a Viking or if J.J. McCarthy is a Viking. It might be the worst trade in the history of the Vikings, right? Outside of Herschel Walker. Right. (laughs) But it it might be one of those trades 20 years from now going, do you remember when Kwesi just gave up the farm and it was the worst pick of all time? Or maybe we're saying, do you remember when Drake May won three Super Bowls for the Vikings? You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be super awesome a month from now when we have a name. Or, let's flip it, if we don't have a name a month from now, it's going to be awesome because we're all going to be throwing pitchforks. You are correct. Yep. <laughs> right? It's going to be, what they is the plan? Mix. What are they doing? 15? What right. are they doing? But I'm I'm just still convinced one way or another they're going to get Drake May or J.J. McCarthy. And I don't know if it's going to work out, but it's going to be at least fun to dream for 
yeah. an off season or so. I think the way that, is this going to work? Uh, you're right, Corey. I think what uh, what KOC laid out there about the impact that they feel they uh, are making with the def- defense, which we all know needs leaps and bounds improvement for Brian Flores to be able to do what he wants to do with that defense, has enabled them even the, to feel more confident about 11 and 23 moving up into that spot to get that quarterback, whomever it end, 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 ends up being. Because without solidifying the defense, it's an exercise in futility. I talked to all of Common yesterday, and we both were, you know, yakking about it. It's, that's the beauty of the draft. I mean, yeah. 11 and 23, um, the, the Lions built their team back up because they solidified everything. And then they got Jared Goff, who's a, I would, I would classify as a really good quarterback. I don't necessarily yeah. think he's an MVP candidate, never will be, probably. Um, but they were able to solidify their offensive line, their defensive line, their, their cornerbacks. They did it through the draft. It took them quite a while. So when you think about the Vikings saying, well, with it, how, look at the players they could get at 11 to 23 that would impact this football team. And then go with Sam Darnold for a year. And, ha- you know, what I mean, that there's all sorts of scenarios. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to definitely move up. But it's, it's going to be one of the most intriguing draft nights in the history of this franchise. And then we're going to go, uh, uh, yeah. I think now what? I think the move for the third pick will be done before the draft. I think that's where they I think that's where they want to go. New England. Because I think on their big board, mm-hmm. they are fine with well. whoever is there at three. I think they have similar grades on all three of the quarterbacks that'll be there. And if one of them's there, I think they'll be fine with it. And if the steam yeah. is real and JJ McCarthy's gonna go the second overall pick, I think they'd be pumped to have Jaden Daniels or Drake May. Mm-hmm. I could just because of as we've talked about for two weeks now that they have that extra well, pick, the pressure is too much to wait. And there are so many other teams that need quarterbacks that you have to get that pick. You probably will overpay for it, but this is the corner they've painted themselves into. I very well think, I mean, I think it could happen before the draft. I mean, I, you know, that you, you can't wait. The Denver Broncos are anxious to get their hands on a quarterback. Um, right, and there are other teams, and you think, well, you roll the dice and wait for draft night, or do you try to get this thing done before? I think you get it done before. No, I think, I, I think after these pro days are done, uh, today is is Jaden Daniels, tomorrow's is uh, Drake, Drake Mays. Mays. Those are the 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 main guys that they can get because JJ right. McCarthy's was a week ago. Oh, good. Then I think that. Thank you, Charge. Yeah. That's when I think their plan will be put into place. They will get the pick before draft night. It's hard to believe the Vikings have never drafted a quarterback in the top ten, right? Right, and never. What people That's I think said, I think it was this show or somebody. They just haven't been that you, bad. Well, they were three and thirteen in nineteen eighty four. Who did they take in that draft? Who did they year, take on? Uh, the, they took uh, Joe Lombardo. Oh, wow. Uh, yep. <laughs> he was their orchestra leader. Yep, that's right. And a place kicker. Why would they do that? Uh, they needed a place kicker. Oh, okay. Speaking of place kickers, yeah, Greg that? Joseph going to the Green Bay Packers. The Packers have Anders Carlson on their roster, the brother of uh, Daniel Carlson, right. former Viking kicker who's uh, just Danielson. killing it ever since he left. Right. Uh, the Vikings did bring in John Parker Romo last week. He's 26. What? He played in the XFL. <laughs> That's, Hawk loves him. Uh, I do. Great so player. Joseph did set the franchise record while he was here for, what, three seasons? He had uh, a 61-yarder, which is the longest kick in Vikings history. And, Rosie, you will remember when we were in London, he went 5-for-5, five five, oh, including sure the did. game winner, even though he missed an extra point. But he went 5-for-5 five five on field goals. Uh, you'll remember that game because you got laughed when Lewisine got hurt. Well, I Rosie. did, but uh, I also remember... <laughs> I remember the double doink. That's the what double I doink. That's what? how the term came. Yeah, that was you could literally hear it throughout Tottenham, Tottenham Stadium. Yeah, doink doink. That was really something. But good, good luck to Greg Joseph. I mean, I know he's going to the Green Bay Packers, but great dude. Uh, really, really like him a lot, and I hope that uh, he has success there, except for the Vikings. Hmm. Right. Uh, but yeah, he deserves another shot. Um, life of, a, of an NFL kicker. I mean, it's just they live a very uh, gypsy like lifestyle. Many of them, they just go from one team to another and. and here he goes. Zach, your hand was half up. Chris Dolman is who they picked in that 85 draft. That was not a bad, yeah. not a bad pick. Player. Also, I looked at it. The Vikings traded yeah, down. They traded down. <laughs> of course <laughs> they did. Uh, yeah. Passed on Jerry Rice. Yeah. Well, oh, Jerry Rice was a, wasn't he a late round pick? He was 16th in the first well, round. He was what? I mean, people hadn't really heard much about him. Yeah. But, but kind of a Randy Moss like. Situation, except they didn't yeah, well, have the, the package. Packers, the Packers passed on Barry Sanders to take Todd, Mar- not Todd Marinovich, who was the big bulky uh, uh, old lineman. Tony from- Mandarich. Tony Mandarich. So oh, yeah. take that. Yeah, that was an L. Yeah, that yeah. that's what happens. But it happens L. all the time in the draft. I mean, you can the, always 
Pointed <laughs> in exact science. Yeah. The Oilers traded up to take Ray Childress. Yeah. I'll remember him. Yeah, Brad's son. <laughs> Brad's son. Brad's son. That's it. Um, NFL kickoffs are undergoing a serious makeover. We all know yeah. this. Here's a little bit more of an in-depth look at it uh, with things I did not realize, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, NFL owners voted 29-3 yesterday to adopt a new kickoff format, which is meant to encourage more returns and increase player safety. This is from The Athletic. Uh, the kicker still kicks from his own 35-yard line with his teammates lined up on the receiving team's 40. Right. Five yards away from the return team's blockers will be in their own 35-yard line. Two kick returners will line up in a landing zone. Did you hear what I just said there? Mm-hmm. A landing zone. Two kick zone. returners. Two will line up in a landing zone between the 20 and the goal line. Here's where it gets weird. Mm-hmm. There's uh, uh, any kick that lands in the end zone is a touchback. If it lands in the end zone, it's a touchback. Any kick that lands before the, the landing zone, which is, again, the 20 and the end zone, will get spotted at the receiving team's 40. Wow. I'm going to say that again. Any kick that lands before the landing zone, which is between the 20 and the goal line, will be spotted at the receiving team's 40. So you can't kick it super short. Yeah. Exactly and right. You can't, so if you kick it long and it's a touchback, it goes to the 30 now, by the way. It goes all the way up to the 30-yard line. So a touchback is the 30, from what I read. So basically okay. what you're saying is the incentive is you can't kick it far because that goes to the 30. Well, you can't kick it short. That goes to the 40. So it's basically telling teams you got to kick it to the landing zone and let them return you it. You basically yeah. need the uh, kicking equivalent of Scotty Scheffler to hit the ball just well right. Said. Yeah, Which, you got to do a way, flop shot. Yeah, think, exactly. And think about right? this. I want to make this you point before I forget. Shot. I, um, where did our kicker just come does. from? The XFL. Oh, the XFL. And where did they yeah. do this style of oh, kicking? The the XFL. XFL. Thank you very much. Look at your scouting This is why XFL you pay are a future GM. I just sit here. And I am like uh, the All American sniper that yeah. uh, that the guy Chris from, Kyle. Thank you. Yeah. So if they kick the ball <laughs> in the All American end zone, sniper, <laughs> he's a first teamer. <laughs> and the All American. The ball comes out to where if they kick it in the uh, end zone? Thirty. Thirty. Okay, but All here's right. the other thing that's interesting. If the ball lands in the landing zone, right. the 20 and the and the goal line, mm-hmm. the receiving team must return it. No fair catches. No, no fair wow. catches. That'd be exciting. Yeah. So I, I heard KOC address this yesterday with PA as well, and he made a really good point. I know when we were first hearing about this a couple of weeks ago, I'm like, I kind of hate, though, that the onside kick then is dead, or at least the surprise onside oh. kick is dead. Because it's been tried, and it's kind of cool, right? We've seen seasons start with right. surprise onside right. kicks. Yeah. Or a mm-hmm. team coming out of half, right, trying to catch a team off guard. That's gone. And what KOC basically said, I think it makes a lot of sense when you hear him say it is, I'll paraphrase, is out of all the kickoffs though, that happen uh, throughout the entire year, the surprise kickoff is so rare, mm-hmm. and then the success rate of those surprise kickoffs is so rare that we're talking about maybe one a year that works. So what are we really eliminating, right? That's true. The, the threat of something that almost never happens for the betterment of the game. And if you say it like that, it makes sense. I like the surprise. I like the threat of a surprise onside kick. But if this eliminates, what is it, 85% or something like that as a yeah, touchback? Yeah. yeah, it was yeah. 22% returned last year. All right, 22%. Year, so. That's, yeah. so we're talking 78% are All touchbacks. Four. That sucks. Yeah, yeah it's Let's g- go. It's going to give the special it's teams coaches right. uh, a lot more to work on during a training camp. Yeah, yeah. It, it was just wasted time. It wasted yeah, time. It was just wasted time. Yeah. All the big build up, the band, you know, it was yeah. going crazy, the skull chant, and then boom. And, and boom. And, and then like, nothing. Okay, yeah. whatever. And, yeah, and again, whether it's. Cordero Patterson or Dante right. Hall back in the day or whatever, Devin Hester, whether it's punt returns or kick returns, those are sweet plays. Oh, and sure to, to minimize the uh, the amount of times that actually gets housed, that sucks too. So yeah. this this should be better. I don't I don't hate this at I, all. You guys I hate don't this? Either. No, no I, I, think I think it's, it's a good great. Step. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Right. And if it sucks, yeah. guess what? After They'll a year, they it. can change it back. Yeah. Rosie's 100% right. There's oh. all this cool stuff going on in the stadium, and then it's a touchback. Oh. Yeah. And you know what's going right. to happen? Yeah. 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 Yep. The days of watching Cordero Patterson, who just yeah. signed with someone. Steelers. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And and lo- locally here, how exciting is a boom call from PA? And how lame has it been the last yeah, few good years? Point, Jacko. Very yeah, good when, point. when the entire kick uh, team runs down after a touchback, but they all run into the end zone like, we would have had you. Yeah. What happened? We would have had you if you would have taken this out. You know, they all, what? it's like the whistle blew seven seconds ago. Yeah. We're right. all happy mm-hmm. that you're running full speed because you're a special teamer. Thank you. You'll get to do so- this again in 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, they just run through the end zone. They just run and through the end zone. Yep, that's it. That's it. Um, yep. 
One more thing. I, I mentioned this earlier, so I'll go ahead and play it before we get a break. Uh, uh, PA again had KOC on yesterday, live from the owners' meetings, exclusively right here on The Fan. And I said it. Coach seemed legitimately excited to have Aaron Jones as our running back. Look, every team has to make decisions based upon what's best for their own salary cap situation. But uh, to to put it, uh, you know, very bluntly, I was running through the halls of TCO Performance Center when uh, I found out that that would be a possibility. Uh, I may or may not have reached out to Aaron and let him know that I would make the drive uh, to come <laughs> help pack his things uh, there in Green Bay and get him back to the Twin Cities as fast as possible. Yeah. By the way, that's the real KOC right there. That's yeah. that guy. He's a funny guy, man. He's just I a normal KOC. dude who gets excited about things. Yeah, man. he's he great, man. I like that guy. Same. Yep. It is weird, though, how they're loading up on defense and kind of putting some pieces together offensively. It is, a, I think, a continued constructive rebuild. The Wilfs don't want to bottom out. No. Nope. I, I 100%. In their, yeah, I think oh, in their entire no. I, <laughs> run as, uh, as owner, uh, either in the past or in the future, they're always going to be against that. Yep. Because this is a chance to bottom out. It could could have been. You could let Kirk go and truly bottom out, but they have no interest in no doing interest that. Zero. And they want to repeat what Houston did last year. Well, and, You and, catch lightning in a bottle with a young quarterback and the offense they have, right. it could be a good thing. I'm sorry, Saucy. Yeah. No, and and right. the other sorry. thing is, we're so close. We're a quarterback away from being good. Correct. I, yeah. I mean, this team is, the, the cupboard is not bare. No. We, right. we have some yeah. great, great young players and maybe the, the best in the league at wide receiver. But look what you're doing, right? What they're trying to do is essentially the San Francisco plan is get a, a, a world-class quarterback on a rookie deal and then have cap space next year. Because otherwise, it's if, going to explode. like I said a couple of weeks ago when Kirk left, if you truly thought this was a Super Bowl team, you overpay Kirk and you keep him. You are and you correct. say, we have everything in place. Hmm. We, we can't yeah, afford that's true. to bring in an unknown at rookie and go for it. we got to have Kirk because he, he's a top 10 quarterback when he's healthy. Let's go for it. So they think that the window is not necessarily this year. They think in the next three or four years, we can put together a team. Well, and, and be competitive for the whole thing in the next three or four. And getting back agree to your or disagree? Uh, original uh, point about who the... No, I agree. I 100%. The Wilfs are not interested in any sort of competitive rebuild in that context. They want to win. They want to win now. I, I mean, I've, I've talked to Mark Wilf long enough to know that uh, anytime you can bring up that subject, you know, smoke comes out of his ears. They they, they spend the money, uh, and they, they, they do exactly what they have to do to, to try to get back to it. I mean, again, the over-under is, what, six wins this year? Yeah. For this football team, so the, the, from a national perspective, this is even before the draft. Um, but the conversation will uh, will perk up again because they're paying Sam Darnold to be the starting quarterback. They have a starting quarterback they feel is Sam Darnold. And no matter who they end up with as a rookie uh, the, to play behind him, if that indeed is going to be the, the situation, the fans are going to want to see that kid play s- much sooner than later because it's human nature. I don't If it's May, if it's J.J. McCarthy, Jaden Daniels, whomever, they want that guy to play now and, and yeah, it's not going to happen. And quickly, they have gotten the twenty third yeah. overall pick because they don't want this kind of a trade to go into the twenty sixth uh, picks. They want to if if it goes poorly, they want it to just affect them in one draft right. next oh. year. But they have the salary cap space to buy a bunch of players that they couldn't get with those draft picks. Oh, good! It's, it's a great God. it's a great situation. No, they just have to pick the right guy. You are correct. Or the whole thing's a waste of time. Right, but, but if they do pick the right guy, man, it'll be sweet. Even if he's the wrong guy, we won't know for seven months. Yeah, You right. know what I mean? Yeah. It's going to be great. All right, 8 o'clock hour, we'll feature Fan 5, headlines and more. This is the Power Trip Morning Show on The Fan. My cousin Dallas and I'm cool. Local music on the Power Trip Morning Show. The Fan.